Hello and welcome to the second session of The Calf Show, where we'll be discussing calf feeding and hygiene protocols to have on farms this spring. We're joined today by James Fitzgerald from Chagas, Rebecca O'Sullivan from Volak, and Irvine Allen, who is a participant in the Green Acres Calf to Beef Programme. Before we start the discussion today, Rebecca O'Sullivan is just going to give us a quick run through of what farmers need to be looking for when it comes to feeding milk replacer. I'm Rebecca O'Sullivan, I'm with Folak. I'm here on Peter and Tom Sohanahan's farm in Kilkenny for the Green Acres Farm Walk today. So I'm here to discuss milk placer, the specs, and how much, I suppose, quantity you should be using for rearing your calves. So when we're looking at milk placer, you want to check the protein level. So for our beef farmers, we'd be recommending between 20 and 23 percent protein and an 18 to 20 percent oil. We want a higher protein, lower fat, and that's all about developing skeletal and muscular growth in our calves. And when we look at our ash and fibre, we want as low fibre as possible, as that's not digestible into our calves, and less than eight in our ash. When you look at whole milk, it's a 7 percent ash content. When we're looking at the back of a bag, your ingredients are in descending order, so your top ingredient is your main ingredient. Ideally, the less amount of ingredients means the more the quantity of the first ingredient is. So we'd always be pushing for whey protein based milk replacers over whey powder. So whey protein would be used in bodybuilding, in muscle development and used in human nutrition as well. And that's where we see better performance in our calves. When our farmers are setting up and feeding their calves, they'd be looking at how much they want to be feeding. We'd be recommending about 750 grams a day per calf. And I suppose this is because when you look at maintenance for a calf, they need 380 grams a day just to survive. And that's with every other condition, right? So that's, they're not too warm, they're not too cold, they're not stressed and everything else is going right in the shed. If there's drops in temperatures um, or if they're too hot, they're going to actually need more to control that temperature. So that's where you'd see it's important for beef farmers to understand this. If they're buying calves in autumn, if they're buying calves in the spring, there's different stresses that could be on the calves at those times. When we're mixing up our milk facers, we'd be recommending that you weigh initially. So weigh the milk facer and weigh on every pallet. Obviously, there can be slightly different densities. Using a clean scoop, weigh on a scales and measure, so 375 grams in the morning and evening, but that's within three litres. And that's a very important one to clarify. For one litre, you need 125 grams of powder, 875 mils of water to give you 12.5% solids, same as whole milk. But if you have a litre of water and add your 125 grams on top of it, that's actually only 11%. So you've actually gone below and you won't get the same performance from your calves. So it's very important that farmers understand that they're mixing it correctly and mixing to the right concentration. Today as well, we'll just be discussing the different feed options that are available to our farmers. So on the O'Hanahan's farm here, they actually have a computerized calf feeder that will feed the calves for them. They can set how much concentration, set the curve and set the weaning and that's all done through the machine. But obviously not every farmer has that system. So there's shuttles that you can get, the milk bars, milk teats. All of these systems work as long as you're consistent in what you do. And that's kind of what we're trying to highlight today. So Rebecca, we've obviously seen from that video, you, you've gone through in great detail what, what's required when it comes to milk replacer, but we might just talk about briefly the ingredients that farmers need to be looking for in their products. Yeah, so I suppose the first thing is you want your top ingredient to either be a whey protein or a skim. Um, these would be the most digestible to your calves and they'd be 35% protein sources. So it's really important that they're your main ingredients. Um, after that, that, looking at your label, they are in descending order. So the top ingredient is your main ingredient and everything underneath that follows suit. So the number of ingredients is also an important factor. If there's a lot of ingredients, it means the top one isn't there as, as high as maybe you'd like. So I suppose as little as possible ingredients, your main dairy source is to be coming from your whey protein or your skim. Um, and I suppose they'd be the, the most digestible to your calves and be the highest quality to have for them. When it comes to price for the product, should farmers just be going into the co-op and picking up the, either the cheapest option that's there or should they be considering this when it comes to buying milk or place their spring? Yeah, look, when it comes to price, I suppose you generally get what you pay for. So it can range from 35 euro bag up to 45 euro bag or so. And again, it comes down to what your main ingredients are 
um, the protein and oil content you have. So um, again, like I said, your whey protein or your skin-based product, you want between 20 to 23% protein and 18 to 23% to 20 oil. And then you want to make sure your ash is less than 8% and your fiber is less than 0.15%. They're important factors in actually the overall quality of the product. So that will determine the price then as well. So Irvine, we'll get you into the discussion now. We'll just, might give, you might just give a brief run through. What's the protocol when it comes to getting calves started on milk or piss or on your farm? Yeah, well, the calves come into me somewhere as close to three weeks as possible. It's probably between two and four weeks um, of age. So in general, I like to, to try and have the, that the farmers that have them on milk or piss before I get them because it's less of a change um, than coming from skim milk and different trauma's different different ventilation everything so nine times out of ten they're on the milk replacer but um, what I would do when they come in is I would the first feed would be um, milk replacer and electrolyte I would add electrolyte to it just to make sure to rehydrate them and um, if the calf is healthy and seems to be that 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 will get out of the way if the calf is if the calf is maybe a little bit shaky or a bit light or it seems to have a bit of a chill I may just give them a, an electrolyte for the first feed or two just to kind of get them get them back, uh, give them a chance to get acclimatized. But uh, that's basically it. Then I, uh, as I use the, the, the Volek Maverick um, in, in the calf feeder. So the biggest probably challenge I'd have is, is training the calves on the calf feeder, getting them into it and getting them soaking. So it take me a couple of days to get them kind of going on that. That's basically in terms of quantity, what would you start them off at and how would you progress it on? Well, like that, it was depending on the calf, but generally I start them at four litres at a, a 125 grams um, per litre of water um, and up to six. But if the calf was strong coming in and was on milk replacer, especially if it was on the, the milk replacer I'm using, um, I could start them on to six if they hadn't travelled too far. So Irvine, you mentioned you have a tea feeder there, but is that the is that your main go to when it comes to feeding calves, or have you have you any other systems in operation? Yeah, I use both. I use both an automatic feeder and a tea feeder. Um, the reason for that is I just don't have enough um, space to rear enough calves on the automatic feeder. But uh, so the calves that come in, that are going onto the automatic feeder to come in, they're away every calf coming off the trailer. Uh, the calves that are going on to the automatic feeder, uh, they get if they don't have an electronic tag, I put an electronic tag into the rear, and then they go on, they go into the shed where the feeders are, where the automatic feeders are. Um, like I said, they start on about the calf is normally start around four liters for the first few days, just to give them a chance to climatize and get get going, and then they go up to six liters as 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 I can get them up onto it. Um, with the teeth feeder then, really it's what's similar, they don't need an electronic tag, but the raid to come in. And uh, as I meant to say, that all the calves actually get uh, an electrolyte with the milk for the first, at least their first feed, um, just to give them every chance, you know, for rehydration and kids are just a little bit shaky or anything like that. Um, the ones that go on the teeth feeder, the same, they get uh, an electrolyte with the milk. And... Uh, Basically, that's it. Um, the, the feeding, um, they're on a, the calves on the automatic feeder are on a 69 day feeding curve, um, which I would try to shorten back by four or five days if I can at all, uh, that back to 64, or 65 if I can this year, just to try to get them eating meal that bit quicker, you know, the quicker I can get them onto ration and eating the kilo, or kilo and a half, two kilos of meal, the, the quicker I can get them weaned and get them out. Um, Rebecca, I'd like to bring you back into the discussion here. We've seen some temperatures drop in recent days and recent weeks. Is there any changes farmers might need to make in terms of feeding levels in, in cold weather for calves? Yeah, so um, definitely the last few weeks we've seen a lot of cold spells hit and I had been speaking to a few of my farmers on it. Um, for truly cold calves, they need about 10 degrees. So every 10 degree drop under 10. So when it hits zero degrees for a three week old calf, they actually need around 100 grams or so more of powder. So that could be given as an extra liter of milk, whether you're feeding at 125 grams like Irvine is or feeding at 150 grams, giving an extra liter a day for that cold spell to get them through it. Um, 
when everything's fine in your shed and the weather is fine, calves need about 380 grams for maintenance alone. So it's what's on top of that is actually going to go towards growth. But when temperatures drop and that cold stress is on calves, that requirement has increased. So you could see that some cows might be stunted at the time of growth if they're not given more. And also they're more susceptible to other issues on farm, such as disease or different problems that can occur at that point. So it is really important to keep an eye on your weather. If you need to feed more, feed more and adjust it up for those few days to help those calves through that, that you're not getting any stunt, especially when conversion is so good in that early age, get the most out of it from them. So it's really important to just feed right at that time. I suppose the key is without overdoing it and jumping and changing between diets or anything like that, you have to be a small bit flexible when it comes to rearing calves and read the situation that's in front of you too. Like, you know, if the weather is dropping in temperature like that, don't be afraid to go in with a couple of, you know, or the extra litre of milk or whatever it is just to get them over that spell. And also maybe for, again, thinking down the line, try and, you know, set up your shade so that the, the environment inside it is as steady and as stable as ever you can the whole way through, just to make sure that it's always, I suppose, a good start is to make sure that inside the shade is always as dry as ever you can. Like, you know, that, that's a good start in control and temperature, really. And then just make sure that there's nice fresh air and that it doesn't get stuffy inside and when the weather improves again and temperatures come up. But... Um, I suppose as well on the milk side of things, you, you do like when a calf comes in first, when he's maybe a fortnight old or that, or he might like Joe, he's, he's in totally reliant on, on the milk you give him for nutrition. And like what Rebecca is saying, he needs up near 400 grams just to meet his own maintenance. That's before he goes and tries and grows anything at all. Like, you know, so really the aim over the first couple of weeks is to feed him well with milk and get him going well. And then when he comes to about maybe a month or five weeks old, when you start thinking, obviously the whole, whole way through, we're keeping concentrates under his nose anyway, and he's beginning to get an appetite for that. But um, we need to start thinking then after five weeks or a month or that kind of thing, it's stepping down the amount of milk replacer we're feeding him gradually and uh, getting him on to more concentrates just so that his room and his fully developed because it isn't long before he's going to be going out to grass and we're expecting him to be able to thrive on grass and he's then like you know so I'd be thinking then when when a calf comes to a month five weeks old to start reducing one, one of the feeds a day would say if you're feeding in a traditional way bucket feeders or that step down the second feed maybe by a litre and by another litre in another few days and just eventually maybe even phase out one of the feeds and um, the concentrates he eats should go on the back of that. And he, he'll, sit, he'll sit on a good level of nutrition, but we're beginning to get a small bit more meal into him as opposed to milk, um, which will send to him down the line. But definitely don't don't spare on the milk replacer at the start anyway. So you have to get him off to a good start too. Okay, so that brings our first section to conclusion. Before we begin our next section on hygiene, we're just going to take a quick look at a video where Rebecca goes through some of the tips for farmers to follow when it comes to clearing, cleaning calf wearing equipment. In this final video with Volek, we're going to be looking at the whole area of, of hygiene and, and, and why it's important. So firstly, Rebecca, why is it important to, to make sure equipment is clean? Um, I suppose the biggest thing is that bacteria and stopping the spread. So when you look at most feeding systems, a lot of cows are drinking from the same bucket or teeth system. And it's really important that that's been cleaned to ensure that there's no bacteria level build up. When you think of there's a few different age groups of calves coming in for drinking. And when you look at bacteria, it's multiplying every 20 minutes. So the more that's getting into a calf means that you're going to get poorer health. The most important thing is that if a healthy calf is going to grow, there's a the three triangle, I suppose, for calves, it's health, nutrition and environment. So it's really important that your bacteria levels are down and that's one element of it is making sure all equipment is cleaned and cleaned correctly. Okay. So how do we go about cleaning, uh, cleaning the equipment? Yeah, so I suppose the first thing is once you're finished feeding your calves, you know, clean straight away. It's part of your, your process. So rinse out all the equipment with maybe 38 degrees water. So then soak them at about 55 degrees with a detergent like paracetic acid or something like that. Um, then scrub clean them afterwards again and rinse with hot water at 55 degrees 
and next step is rinse then again with cooler water you can add a sanitizer or a disinfectant at that point and just hang them to dry so it, there is steps in it but to do you know if you want to make sure it's cleaned and cleaned correctly you need to do it right especially at times when let's say you've a lot of cows on the ground there's a bit more stress maybe you've had a touch of scour maybe there are issues come on onto the farm you need to make sure you're minimizing that as much as possible so that's where really cleaning comes in you know most importantly getting using detergent cleaning at the right temperatures rinsing everything thoroughly and making sure it's dried correctly because if it's not dry correctly it isn't cleaned and how do we know if, if stuff's not uh, clean correctly? Is there a biofilm on some of the equipment? Yeah, so I suppose that's it. You'll see a biofilm will be created on your buckets. And basically, it's just you can literally put your finger in and actually scrape it. So that film, if that keeps building, that's really hard to clean. You need to be able to break it down. And the only way you will is using hot, hot water and detergent. That is just building up more and more bacteria. And that's what the calves can be taking in. And you think about there's so much stress that's going on in calves. The level of colostrum and their you know is dropping within them they have to build up their own immunity so they need to be as healthy as possible to take any of the stresses that are going on and again like i said earlier you have to be hitting 0.7 to 0.8 kilos live weight gain a day to do that you need everything else right you need their maintenance requirement as low as possible and that's kind of part of it thanks very much rebecca thank you Okay, so James, we've seen, obviously, Rebecca's gone through some of the tips the farmers can follow when it comes to calf wearing equipment and hygiene. But are there any other steps or factors that farmers need to consider when it comes to hygiene during the calf wearing season? Uh, yeah, I suppose sure, there's a load of factors around hygiene that farmers need to be conscious of the whole way through. One of them even is, and you might not always think of it, is um, farmers or whoever's rearing the calf, they need to be always conscious of how they themselves could be spreading disease around the shed or spreading bacteria within their own yards, you know? So, um, like a farmer could be treating sick calves and all of a sudden he's back to handling the milk feeding equipment and mixing milk and feeding calves. And like there, there are, there are ways of themselves for spreading disease if they, if they, unless they, you know, really think about it and, um, and are conscious of their own hygiene too when it comes to when it comes to calf prayer. And so I, I'd be thinking one factor would be to, you know, every so often think to yourself and wash wash your hands fairly regular when you're dealing with the calf or have um, have a foot bath outside the calf shed where you can dip your wellies in and, and just disinfect a small bit before you go dealing with calves compared to you know feeding in other areas of the yard or dealing with sick calves, etc. So um I suppose it's it's always it's probably a good idea anyway to maybe you wear um, wear gloves or that when you're feeding the calf. But definitely when you're when you're treating sick calves, I I would be wearing gloves and then maybe even washing your hands. But just just to create a bit of a barrier to bacteria before you go back to your normal feeding routine. And that goes on top of everything Rebecca was saying there about um, about having clean equipment and how to clean it properly and all that. Um, as well as that, then I suppose the, the other things that farmers need to be conscious of is you, really in a, in a calf shed, there's two real main things that will keep the level of infection or the level of bacteria dampened down inside inside the calf shed. And they're, they are making sure that the um, environment is always dry, as dry as ever possible. And uh, the other one is to make sure that there's plenty of fresh air inside the shed. Just on the on the dryness side of things, we want to try and design our calf shed or adapt it as best we can so that there's always good slopes in the floors, good smooth, clean walls and drains that will you know, entice water to always be drained out of and away from where the calves are and to be collected in a, in a tank completely away from where the calves are being reared, just to keep moisture out of the bedding and keep moisture out of the air. And that will keep down the level of infection. Um, and as well as that, on, on the fresh air side of things, like fresh air, is, it, it is as good a disinfectant as you could ever hope to have, really, like, and you should make you as much use as ever you can out of it because it's for free. So you have to try and make sure that you're getting as much ever fresh air into the calf shed as, as possible just without causing any draft that can give a calf a chill and drop the temperature and, and, and that. So just make sure you have plenty of fresh air and a good dry environment and, and be conscious of, of your
your own hygiene when you're feeding the cat and dealing with them, as well as the hygiene of the cat feeding the quid. All right, we might bring you in, in again here. Is how do you manage maybe to clean your calf shed, calf sheds throughout the rearing season? Um, well, the first thing is I suppose I, I be able to clean the calf sheds out um, after at the end of the previous season and um, make sure I get it cleaned out as quick as I can and get it washed as quick as I can um, because I think getting the shed good and dry and having given it time before other calves goes into it is a, is a big help. Um, then before the calves go in, I would disinfect it, I'd give it a real good dis- disinfecting with lime or whatever I, I choose to do on, at, at, at the particular year, but if I actually find lime very good. Um, other than that then, I, like, I just, I'm lucky enough, I have good slopes in the floors. Um, I bought my shed set up that I have canopies over one end of the sheds with infrared lamps to keep, so that, to, to kind of keep the temperature reasonably stable if I get can at all or if it's cold that it just doesn't go get, go down go, the trees don't go down too much but um, the fact that there's good slopes on the floors I just keep a real good bed under them the beds tend to stay dry I don't actually clean the sheds out while, I'm, while there's a batch of calves in it um, but because I'm able, to keep, keep, I'm able to keep the beds good and dry for, for the time they're there um, other than that like um just general hygiene with the feeder and the feeders like you know I, I, I'd wash around the feed at the automatic feeder stations uh, once a week give them a good wash uh, clean them out and make sure that they're clean and keep the teeth changed on the automatic feeders um, and with the with the ordinary teeth feeders then I just I wash them every day just keep you know at least once a day give them a good just a power hose beside the shed and just give them a, a quick quick rinse it's actually quite as easy to do once you do it every day it's no job you let it go for a while that's when it gets hard. James I might just bring you back into the conversation has there been any lessons learned maybe from visiting Greenacres farms in the past few years when it comes to hygiene and improving these standards on farms yeah I suppose back, back before Covid was a problem when we could meet up and call around to each other's farms and that kind of thing the farmers and even myself and I, we would have learned a lot from from each other really about how to how to keep how to keep the the calf rearing stage as clean as possible and to work as well as possible and one thing we would have picked up from a couple of farmers who were doing it really well was um, the amount of straw it takes really to make sure that the calf is always dry and clean is 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 a, is a lot more than a lot of farmers would be tempted to use like you know so Really, like we would have called around to a couple of farms, our wines included, and we would have seen like the level of straw that's used is having a huge positive impact on calf health, and there's very little breakdowns in 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 general herd health, and calves are doing really well for them over the rearing phase. So, uh, all of the other farms really so far would have picked up on that and have, are moving towards using a lot more straw. To the extent that, like, really, I suppose the guideline is that. You should be using 20 kilos of straw per calf per week through the rearing phase. And if you multiply that up over a rearing period of eight or 10 weeks, it's, it's the most of a round bale of straw per calf. And it's, while it, it does sound like a lot of straw, the, the payback is definitely there and the farmers are seeing that. So that's one lesson learned. And then um, I suppose other than that, uh, another thing we would have picked up on, the farmers would have seen from each other, was that generally the farmers that take the time, take that extra few minutes and are more vigilant when they're rearing their calves and a small bit more even meticulous about it, like just making sure the calves are, you know, each calf has drank its full fill, is bright and eager to drink and take take a few minutes every day while they're feeding calves and again while they're looking at them in the evening or feeding them again or feeding them meat or whatever they're doing just to make sure that the calf bed is always dry enough and the air is always fresh enough and each calf is healthy and and has a good appetite and um, if you see anything a miss like that don't leave it a day or two or think that he's going to sort himself eventually or sure I suppose the son or daughter will be home at the weekend and they'll keep, they'll give me a hand to go through the calves or to clean the equipment or whatever it is. Just don't let things slip like that. Just to go and act in time is often enough to, to get calves back on track again or 
to make sure that there isn't a wider spread outbreak of, of a problem in the cab rear space and really to get the best out of it because you do need to like you know that it, it's it's kind of a make or break time in a in a in a calf's beef system you, you, you cannot afford to have anything other than your calf getting off to a very good start because that's what will pay you down the line later stages of the production system thanks for that james so that concludes our discussion for this evening I'd like to thank our panel for participating and I'd also like to thank the stakeholders of the Chagas Green Acres Calf to Beef Programme. Please join us tomorrow where we'll be discussing calf health and implementing vaccination protocols on farms this spring. So please tune in then. <laughs>